Hello everybody! In today's video tutorial, I'm going to explain how to record, edit, and project a Mimesis SDK holographic recording into a Unity environment like this one. Now what that means is, I'm going to teach you how to make a hologram like this and put it in a game like this. So let's get started. To begin, First, we must download the Mimesis recording system. So, just navigate to your favorite web browser. And go to MimesisVR.com. So, the Mimesis SDK is available now for free uh, under an open source license. What that means is you can use their content in any of your projects as long as you attribute them and uh, as long as you aren't using it for anything that someone has to pay for. Now you do need a Xbox Connect V2 like this or an Intel F2000, sorry, <laughs> an Intel F200 recording system. But, uh, if you have both of those things, just simply start the download and uh, it'll come out in a folder like this one. You may have to unzip the folder. Uh, within the folder is a couple of things that we're going to be using. First off, the documentation, very useful. It explains, uh, like I am, how to begin with the tutorial. You're also going to have, oh, that's just a copy of the folder itself. <laughs> You're also going to have the actual recording software here in Mimesis Recorder, which you can open head right like this. Once you've done that, you'll open the recording window. And if you have your Connect installed and you back up slightly, you'll appear like this. Now note that the software needs to detect a human before it can start recording. So, as you can see, the closer I get, the more I disappear. Now, it doesn't even know I'm here. If you untick filter humans, you'll see it's recording the entire room, but it won't recognize you as a human being until it can see your face and your arms. So, untick this. Uh, you can use this function to define the capture box. Basically, that just means the amount of the image that you're capturing. See? So, you could, uh, if in theory you only need this much, see there's all the space up here you don't need, or over here, you could go ahead and uh, remove some of the top bar. You can see as I lift my hand up and lower this, the uh, bounds for tracking slowly disappear, and that'll uh, decrease the eventual size of your uh, miss recording. So the hologram will be smaller because it's recording less data. Uh, right here you can see my mouse, it's kind of obscuring some of the camera range. So, simply uh, hit record, do something, and then hit pause. Bye guys. And it'll move on to the second step. Uh, you can see by holding the right mouse button and dragging it across this inner window, you can manipulate the hologram and uh, see how it came out. There's no way to pan the image, unfortunately, at least not one that I know of. Uh, and you could use this to edit the footage. So say I come to here and I want to uh, cut it out until I start spinning. I mark that as in with this little handy dandy thing right here. See it marks it as in, one second in. And then uh, you watch yourself spin, and then we'll mark out when I'm done spinning. So like right there. And then we move on to export. Now here, you can name your file. Let's call it spin in your chair. Just put your name here. Uh,
you know, the, the movie title doesn't really matter unless you're uploading to Sketchfab. As it says here, uh, you can export your video to Sketchfab once you're done. It's a, it's a website that allows you to uh, share 3D models that you've produced. Now, ticking mobile compatible with mo mobile uh, helps, I think. All it does is make the, the hologram two-sided, but it doesn't really markedly decrease the quality. Uh, you can see here, if we go back to edit and then uh, decrease the texture quality, I guess you do it here. Well, you can't see it right now, but uh, reducing the quality uh, severely makes it so that you, you can't it, it makes the, uh, the, the dot mesh that is being stretched over to produce the holographic image. Uh, you can see how kind of my arm is occluded there. That, uh, that's what I'm talking about. It's basically stretching an image over a 3G projected mesh. And uh, <clears throat> if you change the quality setting, it will be too low or too high. So that mesh will actually just be a bunch of dots uh, you won't be able to see it very well. So try to keep it to high quality if you can, and if you want to reduce the size of the model, simply, uh, as I said, occlude some of your recording space and uh, tick this here box. Then all you got to do is export. So uh, I'll cut that part out because it's going to take a couple seconds. Wonderful. Now, once your video has finished encoding, you can upload it to Sketchfab. Sketchfab is a 3D model sharing site. Once you make an account, you can simply click Upload, and it will help link your account to the site. Mine's already linked, so it'll upload this folder. And you can view it on sketchfab.com. But for our purposes, we're going to find the exported file, which should now be located in the Mimesis SDK software folder, where you found the Mimesis Recorder. Simply click on Mimesis Recorder and go to the Exports folder. Exports will always be within the Mimesis Recorder file. This is where your new file exists. We can take spinnychair.q3d and use it in our new Unity project. First, let's click on Unity. Once Unity has loaded, you'll be greeted with the Unity Project Wizard. At least that's what I like to call it. This shows you all of your projects in progress as well as allows you to begin a new project or view the tutorial videos. We're going to click New and start our first project. Let's call it Hologram Tutorial. We will place it in the Desktop folder so that we can view it on our desktop. Let's place it in a folder called Hologram Tutorial. Now, just press Create Project to begin. We won't be needing any of the, in the Unity Analytics packages, so you can safely disable this. See? Here's our new project folder. Once the project is generated, you'll be greeted with the Unity interface. I'm going to assume you're familiar with most of these items, but if you're not, let's take a brief crash course. This is the scene view. It displays all of the items that are in your scene. You can move around the scene view and interact with the objects that are currently in the scene. The hierarchy here displays a list of all of the objects that are currently in your scene, like this main camera and this directional light, which is basically just the sun. Down here is your project panel. It displays all of the assets and folders that make up your video game. Right now, we don't have any assets. Let's import some assets, like, for example, the Mimesis SDK recording software suite. To begin, we click within the Assets panel 
we right click, pardon me, and then go to Import Package, Custom Package. This will greet us with an interface in which we can choose from our desktop the Mimesis SDK beta folder, which housed our recordings and the Mimesis SDK recording suite. Let's take this Unity package, Mimesis player underscore beta dot Unity package, and import it into our project. Just click Import. You can see now they are appearing in our Assets folder. To begin, click on Mimesis, go to Prefabs, and drag the Q3D player prefab into your hierarchy. This will place one at the origin position, or 0, 0, 0. It is the spot on the grid at the center of the Unity universe. It's important because the main camera is facing this spot. When you go to the game view, which is what you will see when you play your game, that's what you'll see. Right now, there's nothing in the hologram player, so nothing is produced. But we'll change that very quickly. Simply click on this, pardon, simply click on the Q3D player in the hierarchy, which will display it in the inspector tab. Right down here, is the Q3D player script. This component displays the Q3D player's settings as well as the source for where it will display the hologram video. All we have to do is locate the name and location of our export by clicking spinnychair.q3d and copying its location. So all you have to do is navigate to your desired hologram in the Windows Explorer, click on the tile bar up here, and then right click, copy the current location. Then go back to Unity, paste that location in the file name slot, and then at the very end, type the name of your desired file. In this case, spinnychair.q3d. Now, when we hit play, we should see our hologram. There I am. I'm a little high up, but there I am. We can adjust the position of the hologram by selecting the Q3D player and changing the transform. Just remember that once you're satisfied with its position, that any changes you make are also going to have to be remade while the hologram is not playing. See? Uh, but that's it. You can record and edit a hologram at your will. Now, you can just decorate the scene as you like, uh, make a game or movie in Unity. I find that these holograms are fantastic stand-ins for uh, for high poly models or, or uh, 3D actors that you might need for any given mobile VR based solution or uh, really any sort of virtual reality application could be improved by introducing a Mimesis SDK hologram. Uh, it's a very cheap solution for immersive human analogs. And uh, it's quite fun. A little goofy looking, but uh, I think it's pretty futuristic. It's kind of what we expected out of this weird, woolly 2016 future. These silly looking 80s holograms. So, uh, looking forward to seeing what you guys make with uh, your new Mimesis hologram system. Good luck, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial.